you welcome back to my channel so today we are back with another video in which we are going to see how http post method works in flutter what we do what we implement to make that work so we are going to use an api to check the http post method so this is the website recrest.in so you can use this website to use different kinds of method you have different methods here get post put patch delete and things like that so we are working on the post method today. So in the post method, what we are going to do is, if you can see here, we'll put in the name and the job, and we should get in the response, the name, the job, the ID, and the time at which it was created. So this is the, uh, you know, the sublink of the, this part, so request.in, and the response code is 201. So 201 basically means that the response is valid. So let us get back to our Flutter code and see how we are going to work with it here. Okay, so this is the sample Flutter code. I've deleted all the unwanted elements from here and I have renamed the class to uh, uh, the title to HTTP post method. And I have an empty container here. So inside this empty container, we are going to need two main items here. The first one is the name and the second one is the job title. So let us go in uh, get going and start working with it. So first I'm going the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some padding here So I'm going to add it on all the sides Let's say I'll add 20 Okay, so we have added the padding and then what we are going to do is we'll, we are going to create a column mm -hmm, Sorry Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the container is going to have a child and the child will be a column. So the child is the column, our column will have some children. So the first children that we are going to take here is going will be a text field. And we will need two text fields here. So, I, uh, okay, so I'll do one thing. You know inside the text field I'll create a decoration and the decoration will be of type input decoration and I'll add some borders to it so border and the border is going to be outline input border okay so as you can see we have our first text field here I'll also add a hint to make it clear so my hint text will be enter name here. Okay, you can see that the hint text is also here now. So now uh, I'll just copy and paste this text field. But before we do, do that, you know, we are going to use two type of controllers here, text editing controller. The first one will take the name and the second one will take in the job. So let me just create, uh, you know, these two things here. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to take two controllers. So the first one I'm going to call name controller. And this will be of type text editing controller. And I'll create one more here, text editing controller. I'll call this one job controller. And what this is again going to be a type of text editing controller. Okay, so the first text field we are using for the name. So in here, our controller will be name controller. And now I'll just copy and paste these, uh, this text field here for the our second part, which is a job controller. And I'll change the controller and this thing here. I will say enter job title here. And this is going to be a job controller. Okay, so now once I save this, you can see now we have two text field options here. The first one is the name and the second one is for the title. I'll just add a size box in between to give some gap. So I'll keep the height to 10. All right. 
So now you can see we have some gap in here. Also, I'll create a button here, which will uh, be used to submit the data. So I'll say elevated button on pressed for now. I'm going to keep it null and the child will be a text which will say submit. All right, so you, we can see everything here. So let us do one more thing, you know, which is a very good practice because see, let's just say you add more of a padding here. So, you know, if this comes down, so whenever the keyboard is open, you get that overflow, uh, overflow pixel message. So what do you need to do is you just need to go into your scaffold and inside the scaffold, the first child you should have should be the single child scroll view. So let me just add that here. All right, so single child scroll view is here. So even if the keyboard is there, you know, it is just going to shift uh, the things upside. So uh, we don't get that overflowed pixel message here. All right, so we have two different controllers here. So now the second thing that we need to do is we need to create a model class of this response here. So for to create the model class, the best thing I always like to use is I, I just go here. I use this website here, quicktype.io. So I'll just go here and paste this here. Okay, so you can see that everything is created right here. It does everything for you. I've selected the source type as JSON and the language here is Dart. So I'll just copy the code. I'll go back to my code. I'll create a model class here inside my library. So what I'm going to do is I will create a Dart file. I'll call it data model. And inside here, I'll just paste it. Okay, so you can see that we have the data model here. So this has the name, the job, the ID and created that which will show us the date and time. And whenever we want to use this model class, what we need to do is we need to use this final data model, data model from JSON, JSON string. So this will pass on the data to this class as per this class, as per the items in this class. So the next, next thing that we would need to do is we will need to uh, you know, create a future function that is going to post the data. So let us just go ahead and create the future function now. So right here, we will create our future function. So that will be a future of type data model. Okay, so this is a future of type data model. I'll call this submit data. And even before we do that, you know, we need uh, to import this data model. Let me just import it. And even before this, we need to uh, add the HTTP package. So let me just go ahead and quickly put in the HTTP package. So to get the HTTP package, we'll go to pub.yaml uh, file. And in here, we will go to pub.dev. And let me just search for HTTP. Okay, so here is the HTTP package. Let me just go and to install this, we'll just copy this dependency and add it into our pubspec.yaml. All right, so it's done now. We'll just click on pub get so that it can get all the details of the HTTP package. All right, it's done. So let us just go back to our main dot dot. And what we are going to do here is we are going to import our HTTP package. So I'll import HTTP dot dot and I'll import it as HTTP. So now let's get back to the future function we were creating. Let's get back there. Okay, so this future function as it is a future, it's going to be of type async. All right, so let me just create, call it an async. And what this is going to do is, this is going to take in a response. So I'll create a variable called response. I'll say await for HTTP dot post. 
okay so in the post function i will say uri dot https and inside https we need the authority and we need the unencoded path so what is the authority authority is right here authority is this header so i'll just copy it from here and i'll paste it in here and remember while putting in the authority we don't need to type https as we have already said that this is https and we also don't need this backslash here and what is the unencoded path unencoded path is right here this one uh, so i'll just copy this here slash api slash users i'll go here and paste this inside the unencoded path All right, so I'll just finish the statement of this semicolon. All right, so we are done with this part till now. So the next thing that we are going to do is we also need to pass in the body. So the body, we have two things here. We have the name and we have the job. So the first thing is name. And the second thing is the job. Okay, it's giving us an error right now because we have not initialized the job or anything here right now. So I'll just do that in a while. So let me just initialize these two things so it's going to be a string of name and it's going to be a string of type job so now the error is gone so let us proceed to the next step so i'll say uh, i'll create a variable called data and the data will be of type response dot body so whatever the response we get from the http it's going to be stored inside this variable data and just for our reference i'm going to print this data And let us do one more thing. So we'll check if the response of the status code is 201. This status code here, uh, this one. It's 201. So we are going to push it. Okay, we are going to see if it's working. So what we are going to do is we are going to say if response dot status code is equal to 201. So we are using double equal here as we are not assigning any value here. We are rather checking it. So I will say a string of response string is response dot body. And what we will do now is we will return it to the data model. But before returning it to the data model, we need to initialize the data model. So we'll do that. And before, uh, let me just go here and say data model from JSON, as we read that earlier, is going to take in the response string. And if this statement is not true, we are just going to return null. All right, so we are done with this thing here. So let us go back to the next step. Let us initialize the data model, the first thing that we need to do. So I will say data model underscore data model. So I've initialized our data model now. So now we need to push in, uh, you know, pass this function inside the elevated button that we just created here. So let us just go and do that here. Okay. So inside the on pressed, again, this on pressed, it's going to be an asynchronous function as it's going to take a value from the future. So what we will, I will do is I will say string of name is equal to name controller. And a string called job is going to be the job controller. Okay, it's giving us the error here because I'm not passed in as a text. So let me just do that. And the same thing here. 
All right, so both of these have been passed in as text now. So what I will say is, I will say that the data model of data, I'll create an, I'm creating an object of data model. It will say await. And now we are going to use this here, this one uh, function which says submit data and this is going to take in the name and the job which we have already assigned up here and then we are going to set the state we are going to update the values as underscore data model this is going to be equal to the data that we pass into it so let me just save everything. You see that everything is working absolutely fine here. We have no errors in everything. So let us just see if our data is being posted. So I've opened the run window here. I'm going to quickly hot restart our app. All right, so let me enter a name here. So I'll just type in the name as test user. And the job title I will say as test job. So let me click on submit. See, once I click on submit, you can see that we have the response. So the name is test user, job is test job, ID is 620, and this was created at this time. So if I click on submit again, you will see that the ID and the time, they keep changing. So this is exactly how we use the HTTP post method to work in Flutter. And if I update the values here, let me just show that to you. So let me just say user is blank and job is unknown. So you can see it says user is blank, job is unknown, ID is 192 and it's located at this time. So this is uh, how we work with the HTTP method in post. So if you have any questions, any queries regarding the same, let me know and I'll make sure I can be of all the help uh, to you, whatever your queries are. So once again, thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. Have a good time. Thank you. Bye-bye.